want to know, what am I, 58, 59, one of those? I'm really not counting. <laughs> At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Amen. But we praise God for uh, the length of time that we've been here. O'Fallon Apostolic Assembly and um, <clears throat> some of you have heard me say that it's kind of frightening to think about if I didn't stay here um, because I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio and I had all plans to go back to Cincinnati once I was done with my military um, <clears throat> assignment uh, my, my career in the military but that didn't happen by the grace of God Yes, Lord. I can only imagine what might have been the outcome had I gone back home. It might have been good, but I don't know. And that's the scary part. <laughs> but I'm grateful that I'm here. Amen, amen. We thank God for Elder King and Lady King in their absence. Amen. Praying for their safe travels back home. Amen. Certainly to each of you, God's people in your respective places. And certainly, last but not least, my beautiful bride, amen, that I don't have the privilege of being able to, to look at right now. She's down there helping with the kids. Amen. 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 I don't think that this has happened. <laughs> I'm in strange waters right now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yes, Lord. And then I got this throwback on. Some of y'all probably forgot about this one. <laughs> I had a hard time getting this button right here. <laughs> it's kind of choking me right now. <laughs> amen, amen. We praise God <clears throat> for each of you. And we certainly hope that we can say something to you that would cause your heart to be encouraged. Amen, amen. The, the last step in the process, whatever process is, it represents the one thing that's lacking from completion. And oftentimes we refer to them figuratively like the final piece of the puzzle. Or we might use the expression, the last leg of the journey. Or the cherry on top. For this lesson, brothers and sisters, Another one that we're familiar with we will use as our thought for today, the icing on the cake. I've got a hand clap somewhere. Oh, 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 yes, no, that icing on the cake just came in the room. Thank you, Jesus. I oh, know that's right. Yes, Lord. Testimonies are a direct reflection of the experience of the one who testifies. And so in a courtroom, there are uh, eyewitness testimonies, and they reflect what the, the, the person that's testifying, what they saw. Uh, and it's, it's an experience that their eyes had with the situation. An expert witness in the courtroom is generally required to provide an account of how much experience they have in their field of expertise. Amen. Again, testimonies are a direct reflection of the experience of the one who testifies. And so now all of this time, you've been wondering what the preacher meant when he said, can I get a witness? Now you know. Thank you, Jesus. There are two types of testimonies that we want to talk about today. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Two types for believers. They're based upon their experience with God. Types of testimonies are active and passive. Amen. So passive, passive, some examples of passive types of testimonies that I see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now that light, brothers and sisters, that exists in us is a reflection of the God that resides in us and it's for his glory. 
the way you walk or the way you talk testifies to your experience with God. Can you say amen, somebody? The example that I really like can be found in Acts chapter 3, where uh, Peter testified of how the lame man at the gate called Beautiful was healed. So Acts chapter 4 shows them being detained overnight after the situation. They were being questioned the next day by the religious and the civic authorities concerning this lame man. And they were asking in Acts chapter 4, verse number 7, by what power or by what name have you done this? Dropping down to verse number 8 through 10, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, if we be examined of this good deed done to this impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all. And to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. You say, Amen. Dropping down further in verse number 13, he says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them in this that they had been with Jesus there was something about them that let the rulers know that they had been with Jesus that's a passive testimony can you say amen somebody that when you spend time with Jesus hallelujah when you connect with him there are people who will know that you have been with Jesus when we experience Jesus and we allow him to work his perfect work in us and to disciple us, even as Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Paul said in another place, place that ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Lord have mercy. Let this mind be in you. Just, just get out of the way and let his mind be in you as clay in the hands of the passive testimony of God's handiwork. You and I will be. There goes another masterpiece of Jesus. Can you say that, somebody? Uh, then there is the active testimony we find about uh, after how the Ark of the Covenant was returned from the house of Obed and Enoch. Here, David, he encourages the people to testify. In 1 Chronicles chapter number 16, he says, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. He says, sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talk ye of his wonderful works. He's saying, get in the service, God and mercy, Jesus. Open up your mouth and give God some praise. My God, my God, in Psalm 145, David himself testifies. It says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. And with all of your experience with God, go ahead and testify, Brother David. Well, David says, well, all righty then. I'm glad you asked that I would testify. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And if David were here with us right now, he'd say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. He would say, come on here, O Fallon Apostolic. Actively testify and magnify him. Listen, y'all, let me tell you something. That when I was going through a scary situation, let me tell you what I did. This is David talking. He said, I saw the Lord and he heard me. And he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked unto him 
and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. David is saying, come on here and experience God. You got to taste him and you got to see what he's all about. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. He said, oh, fear ye the Lord, ye saints of his, for there is no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Can you say amen, somebody? David, I can hear him saying right now, I thought this was testimony service, uh, but it seems like nobody has anything to say. Uh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Uh, has anybody in the room experienced God? Uh, if you experience God, uh, then you want to have a testimony. Uh, you know, I think I'll testify uh, while I have a chance. Uh, let me tell y'all something. See, I don't mind. Listen to David. I don't mind boasting about my God. See, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I'm going to boast right now from Psalm 23. Lord, have mercy. Let me talk about my God. See, the Lord, he is my shepherd. He is my protector. He is my keeper. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. See, I used to be a shepherd boy, even back in the day. And I knew how important it was to keep the well-being of the sheep. And based upon my experience, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I see God now as my shepherd. My God from Zion, because I know that I have the need of a shepherd myself. I'm just a little sheep. Can you say amen to somebody? My God, see, he is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. Somebody, listen, let me tell y'all something. That when the lion and the bear came, my God, he gave me strength to conquer them. Even when the uncircumcised Philistine Goliath, who came to defy the armies of God with one smooth stone, and in the name of my God, I took him out. Can you say amen, somebody? Let me move on with my testimony. See, I shall not want. There is nothing that I like, not now or in my future. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. See, let me tell you something. I've been young, and now I'm old. And yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Can you say man, somebody? I'm not done with my testimony. See, he's all over me. And he's keeping me alive. He's on the left, on the right. In front and back. Underneath, over me. And he's living down inside. It's the idea of being utterly contented. In the good shepherd's care. And consequently all. situation is and declare that I'm good. Can you say amen somebody? I already know that if I had not been for the Lord who was on my side that my enemies would have swallowed me up. And because I know that I can say I'm good. Come on here somebody. I fret not myself because of evildoers and I'm not envious against the world. In other words, I'm good. Let me move on with my test. 
Come on. He made me to lie down in green pastures. Can you say, man, somebody? Typically, sheep, they require that four conditions are met before they will lie down. Can you say, man, somebody? Because of their timid nature, they refuse. To lie down uh, unless they feel that all things are free and clear, uh, free from all sources of fear. Uh, too socially, uh, sheep will not lie down unless they're free uh, from the friction with other sheep in the fold. Uh, can you say that, somebody? Uh, they're typically tormented uh, by flies and/or parasites, uh, and they lie down unless they're free from being pestered. Can you say man somebody? And finally sheep, they will not lie down as long as they feel in need of finding food. They must be free from hunger. Can you say man somebody? Hear me when I say that he made me to lie down. Now to him who was able uh, to do exceeding abundantly above uh, all that we can ask or think according to the power uh, that worketh in us. Can you say man somebody? It is the presence of the shepherd uh, that makes all of this happen. Uh, he is a very present help uh, in the time of trouble. In his presence Oh. 
is the best part of the cake. Uh, that's not my testimony, but uh, come on here, somebody. Uh, surely goodness uh, and mercy shall follow me. Thank you. 
This is another opportunity for you to see my glory. This is another opportunity for you to see my power. For you to see that I'm the one that takes care of you. Hallelujah. This, this was the problem with the children of Israel back in the, in the old days. They wanted to have a king like everybody else. Hello, somebody. And that's how they wound up with Samuel. <clears throat> and that was not God's will. God wanted to be their king. Come on here, somebody. So we can't be relying on the government. We have to keep our faith in him. Congress is not my shepherd. The right side of the aisle is not my shepherd. The left side of the aisle is not my shepherd. The independents are not my shepherd. God is my shepherd. It's not because of them that I don't want. It's because of him. He's the one that supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. The heart of the king, the left and the right side, are in the hands of the Lord. The heart of the president is in the hand of the Lord. The heart of the, the uh, Supreme Court is in the hand of the Lord. And he turns it with us in which way he will. He knows what he's doing. Let every soul be subject to the, to, to the higher powers. For the powers that be are ordained of God. Hallelujah. There's no power but of God. God is in control of all that's going on. It makes no difference who's in the White House. God knows that he put them there. He did. Whether we agree or not, he's not a Republican, he's not a Democrat, he's not an independent. He's God. And he knows what he's doing. He said, behold, I, I, I create good and what? He knows what he's doing. The Bible says, for if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He kept them blinded to who he was so that they would crucify him. He knows what he's doing. Come on here, somebody. Lord, have the mercy of Jesus. And his humanity showed up in Gethsemane. He said, Lord, if it be possible that this cup pass from me. But he had let, to let go. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And that has to be our testimony because the Lord is our shepherd. Hallelujah. Because of all of that, we put that icing on that cake. We praise him. Hallelujah. We add our own icing to the cake. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Keep your cup at full. Oh, don't let your ice run out. Don't let, don't, don't leave the lid off. So that it dries up. Take good care of it. Hallelujah. Take good care of the icing on the cake. God bless you today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 If you hear under the sound of my voice, that means that you're on this side of glory. You're in the land of the living. 